If you have a pet, you know what your veterinarian does to keep the animal healthy. But you probably don't know that veterinarians are charged with that same responsibility in the space program. Supervising animal passengers in the unmanned satellite program. DVMs also research new means of defeating disease in domestic animals. Which is another way of saying they're concerned with human nutrition. In the field as well as in the lab, veterinarians engage in prevention, control and cure of animal diseases which is also a way to check the spread of certain diseases in humans. A much more varied practice than any veterinary medicine student ever dreamed of is keeping nearly 500 wild animals healthy for commercial and entertainment purposes. But there's no time for dreaming while treating these patients. professional care for your pet or a movie elephant. Doctors of veterinary medicine play a vital role in the biological sciences, helping to improve both animal and human medicine through education, research, and practice. importance attaches to each activity you've just seen. As the graduate of four years of professional schooling goes to work in a wide variety of capacities. Today, he and she receive a degree of importance to them and to the profession that they'll now serve. Commencement is just that for the men and women who start out today with three new letters after their names. DVM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Four years ago, most of us had two letters after our names, a bachelor's degree. A few of us came to Davis after only two years of pre-professional academic work on another campus. Hello, you're Roberta Stein? Yes, sir. I'm Dr. McGowan, Roberta. Won't you have a seat? Pleased to meet you. I'm interested in... But we all started more or less even well, with questions. Delighted that you're here, Roberta, and uh, you have a very interesting background. Uh, you're going to have many questions as you go through the school, and uh, probably some you'd like to ask right now. I want you to start in now and ask plenty of questions while you're here. Okay, well, I just have several questions. One of them is, do you find, or does, does the staff find that a woman is inhibited in any way by her less strength? Does she need more strength than perhaps she ha has? Well, the answer to that is that uh, we feel a profession has overcome the muscle aspect and there's more brains that's, than muscle. Now. That's what I always And so the questions are asked and answered as the first year begins. I know that you're wondering right now what anatomy is and uh, what you'll be doing for the next uh, few weeks, two months in this laboratory. Let me begin by saying... All freshmen have had some practical experience working with animals. Some have worked in other fields after completing their undergraduate work, as engineers, teachers, biologists, chemists. Some are college graduates who have entered veterinary school after two years in the Army or the Peace Corps. The freshman year, we study the normal animal, which means big doses of anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and embryology. It seems to be a good idea, starting this way, because if we're real solid on all the normal aspects, we'll be better at understanding the changes a diseased animal undergoes. 
I'm beginning to see why I had to take all that chemistry, zoology, and biology as prerequisites for veterinary school. The same prerequisites, incidentally, that you take for medical school or human medicine, as we veterinarians say. Another thing I found out as a freshman is that although we seem to work extra long and hard hours, we're really part of a larger campus, the University of California, Davis. Bicycling around, living in a dorm, studying, getting some recreation. We look like any other students. Unless you happen to hear us in the silo. Going on this afternoon. Get to scrub in with Dr. Layton on uh, perineal hernia. Really looking forward to so the clinical signs. Well, this particular one, anyway, was uh, she was straining, was having trouble defecating, and wasn't passing any stools at all. And they did a rectal on it, and uh, palpating it, they were able to find out that he has a perineal hernia. Was a male dog? Yeah, right. Incidents male dog. They you know, seemed to all be in males, and that was it. Is there, a, the is there a hazard on this type of surgery dealing with that nerve? Yeah, that, that's the whole problem. It's the thing that's really bothering me is uh, this pudendal nerve. And if you carry your incision down too far... Seniors discussing some surgery are four years away from anatomy, which we freshmen are in the middle of. Mm -hmm. Roberta would know. Roberta, would you come over and give us a hand? Yeah. We'll be help in our basic anatomy. Yeah, sit down. Be our anatomy well, We're trying to figure out exactly where the pudendal nerve and artery run, uh, coursing along the back there, so that we make sure that we don't hit it. The pudendal? Yeah. I believe it runs about an inch or three quarters of an inch over the tuberaceae. It runs posterior medially back towards the end. The silo seminars are useful to us sophomores, too. To stay away from that pretty Even though it seems that we need most in the second year is a good pair of eyes. And you keep them glued to binocular microscopes. Now we're studying the diseased animal. And we're nowhere without the constant peering in the scope. Or seeing the real thing. Long-standing pneumonia probably as a result of a chronic case from a shipping fever outbreak. You look at this animal, it's coughing, difficult breathing, it has lost considerable weight. Now, if you will listen to his lungs, I think you can tell which areas are being consolidated. It might help if you can check the other side to see whether this is bilateral. They should be looking for areas of dullness, areas where normal sounds come through. It's quite a bit of that movement like you did. In the thoracic inlet, running up the trachea and to the laryngeal region. It's quite movable, indicating things. So there's considerable fluid in the trachea and through the bronchi running down deep into the lung. Well, I can hear a, an area of dullness, the uh, anterior ventral through here, and as I come up, there's an area here where I can pick up uh, lung sounds, and which are indicative of the great congestion here. And then uh, there's also an area of dullness up through here. Uh, I, I think I can also pick up some. Uh, and the friction. Plural friction. Yeah. Friction. A scraping and, sound. Yeah. So there, there must be quite a bit of uh, fibrosis is. going on in there. And, so uh, definite consolidation. At least. It's pneumonia and also pleuritis. I, I, I on this side. How about that side? Well, anteriorly and ventrally, I'm picking up an area of consolidation. Just dorsal to this, I'm also picking up what I consider as being quite normal lung sounds. They are coming through. Um, I'm also hearing uh, areas of friction sounds, which I think would represent uh, adhesions, fibrinous adhesions. So I think the picture on this side fits very similar to the one that Mike has described on that side. Now, what would you think of the prognosis on an animal like this? I think the prognosis would be very poor. What does the clinical uh, blood picture show? Well. In our record, uh, we do not have the expected increase in white cells. It's essentially along the normal level. Uh, with this amount of debris, wouldn't you expect uh, an increased white cell? Yes, I would. 
and and actually the lymphocytes are lower than would be expected. Is so Medicaid no response to medication. Uh, it's not necessarily no response to medication. Uh, the body defense. But just observing the diseased animal isn't enough. Medication. Maybe. Even the best clinician can't be sure until he has checked himself out in the lab. A blood sample might give us some clues. A tissue culture. Or maybe we're dealing with a parasite. Very rarely do we use all the tools on one suspected disease. We're learning to zero in on one or two possible causes simply by trained observation of the animal. Then to confirm the tentative diagnosis or deny and start all over again. But before the observation and clinical confirmation comes the hard core of learning, lectures and library. The second year student at the School of Veterinary Medicine discovers that the road to becoming a first rate comparative biologist is a long old road. Pathology, bacteriology, microbiology and parasitology the vast array of drugs available today to the veterinarian involves biologicals and chemicals. So the underpinning for the use of drug therapy is supplied in pharmacology courses. The recognition and treatment of animal diseases is a prime learning for future veterinarians. But just as important is another part of the second year curriculum, the causes of disease. Pathology involves more looking at notes in a darkened room and at the slides enlarged on the screen. Environmental and hereditary factors are also part of the second and third year epidemiology courses. And within that framework, medical genetics and ecology are required lectures. It's required too that we put the notes and books away every once in a while and just enjoy each other. The weenie bake is one of our traditions. We feed ourselves, our families, and the faculty. But the next morning, we're back in the small animal clinic, asking and answering questions. Clearly, the reason for that vibration, Ted, why don't you take a listen? Uh, you'll, you'll see there's quite a significant murmur. Uh, this is a young dog, about six months of age, and this was noticed when he was three months of age. What are the prob possibilities here, Nancy? Well, it could be a colonic stenosis, or it's quite, quite a thrill that the owner's noticed. Maybe it's a machinery murmur. That's what it sounded like was a machinery murmur. Machinery murmur, yeah. I think it's pretty definite. You'll find, if you'll listen here, that the thing is reflected all, the sound is reflected all over the chest. It's pretty difficult to put the stethoscope anywhere without hearing it. Does, uh, if it is a machinery murmur, um, does that have a breed disposition? No, I don't think so. Uh, I feel that this is something that's congenital and, uh, I think, accidental. I'm not aware of it's being more prevalent in one breed than another. Well, the question that you need to ask is, uh, what does this mean to the dog? Uh, where do we go from here? Is this something that's bothering the dog now? What do you think about that? Do you see any signs of heart failure here? No, I think it's or has it got a make wheel? Certainly doesn't seem to be any. Uh, do you think that liver is in large, Nancy? Oh, yes, yeah. Did the owner report this dog that would get tired? Uh, no. I mean, no. I, Th that's the point. There hasn't been any sign that this is bothering him. I don't this feel point. anything. He doesn't seem to be. Uh, his color looks good up here. Off. Now you take a look. You see his leg. There's no no venous congestion. No signs of increased venous pressure. So he has this rather marked abnormality in his heart. Not bothering him now. Uh, the question is what it's going to do in the future. Well, what do we do with him? How do we go about evaluating? Possibility of taking some X-rays. All right, x-rays, tell us what? Well, they could show us an enlargement, possibly, of the heart, and that would give us a good... The third year, as you can see, is mainly devoted to diagnosis. Our students have had a thorough grounding in the normal animal and the pathology of the abnormal animal. Now we deal with the diagnostic procedures, 
on every species. Mostly the procedures are demonstrated by faculty and staff. But although practice is usually reserved for the senior year, some students have an opportunity to assist us, particularly in large animal medicine and surgery. Diagnosis is both a science and an art. Science can be taught by lecture, demonstration, and practice. But art is more of a contagious attitude. Our students, for the third year, are highly susceptible to the contagion. Mostly, they decided in high school, sometime sooner, that their interest was in the life sciences, and particularly in the broad range of animal species. So they spent two or more college years in the fundamental pre-professional courses, then two years here on the normal and the diseased animal. They're susceptible to catching the art of diagnosis because they've brought motivation to the acquiring of knowledge. Well, I'm glad to know the faculty thinks we're learning. Sometimes I wonder myself, particularly when we take a practicum like today in freshman histology. We knew this was coming and we studied for it, but it's something else again when that second hand sweeps around and we move. There are no practicums or quizzes or lectures. Picnic day is a Davis tradition on a Saturday in April. The whole campus is involved and something like 50,000 people turn up for the all-day festivities. We run an animal health fair as our contribution to picnic day and as a way of showing visitors the scope of activities of today's graduate veterinarians. Our wives show off too for the annual dog obedience trial. Finally, the last year, the year when senior students put three years of theory into practice. Before this valuable animal is operated on to correct a bone problem, he is carefully tested for lameness. Then x-rayed. Speed is essential in preparing the animal for surgery. Straps are securely fastened and the hydraulic platform raised within seconds after a tranquilizing injection is administered. Large animal surgery may be the most dramatic to watch, but the small animal surgery clinic also gives senior students opportunities to assist faculty in a wide variety of procedures. Seniors accompany faculty in one of the school's ambulatory units. Today, to a nearby ranch to test fertility and milk production on a large herd of dairy cows.
Meanwhile, back home, other senior students are helping to staff the outpatient clinic. The University School of Veterinary Medicine is the only one in California, and one of three in all the western states. So when we say this clinic provides a service to the community, it's a very large community. At the same time, in common with all clinical services of the university, this facility provides excellent teaching material for the students. The animal that was referred by a private practitioner, admitted, examined, and followed, is now the subject of a case conference. Were normal with the exception of the circulatory system. The mucous membranes in that system were found to be pale. Also in the lymph nodes, the right popliteal lymph node, there behind the rear leg, was found to be slightly enlarged. And also on abdominal palpation, there was a large mass in the anterior abdomen, which is thought to perhaps be this spleen. So with, uh, with this history of a chronic unresponsive anemia, uh, duration of which we cannot really be sure of, but it has been present at least three months with uh, a type of anemia that has been unresponsive to intensive hematinic therapy, I think we can get a pretty good idea by the degree of unresponsiveness and that uh, in three months, uh, the PCV has risen from 15% to only 21% in uh, three months of therapy. A conference with two equally important goals, good clinical medicine and effective teaching. The veterinarian is also particularly well qualified to assist and to manage certain research with animals. Aimed at bettering the lot of man. Respiratory diseases in the horse, pulmonary emphysema, chronic bronchitis, are found also in man. So the horse is a very useful model for studying these diseases from an experimental point of view. What we want to know is what the flow rate in and out of the respiratory system is and what the tidal volume is. And at the same time, it's useful to know what, how much effort the animal is expending to breathe. Now, in order to get these measurements, we use an esophageal balloon to measure transpulmonary pressure. This then gives us an index of the effort that the animal is making to breathe. And we measure, using a mask, the flow rates and tidal volume. The mask is put over the horse's nostril. Most horses tolerate the mask very well. You can see on the end of the mask, we have the pneumotach heads, which will record flow rate and tidal volume. We can attach the pneumotach heads to the strain gauge, which will convert a mechanical signal to an electrical signal, which will be seen on the recorder. And once this is on the recorder, then we have a permanent record of this animal's respiratory pattern. Today, the School of Veterinary Medicine is here in Herring Hall. Tomorrow, the school will be part of the extensive new health sciences complex on the Davis campus. But wherever future students learn veterinary medicine, they'll practice the art and the science in dozens of different endeavors.
Each endeavor has a degree of importance for the health of all living things. And each year, as freshmen enter the School of Veterinary Medicine, and as seniors graduate, that degree of importance can be measured in your community, in our nation, and throughout the world.